Welcome to this video in which we provide an overview of interactions that, that can occur between a free body and its environment. And we're going to represent uh, what can happen in three dimensions. So the idea is that anytime you're drawing a free body diagram, you need to uh, understand what types of forces and couples uh, the environment of the body can uh, apply to the body you know, as the environment interacts with the body. And so uh, that's what we're going to talk about today is several different uh, types of forces and moments that can be applied. Um, my experience in working these sorts of problems, this is sort of like the secret code book that uh, once you understand uh, what the different things mean, uh, it's much easier to write down than what the free body diagram should be. Uh, for a long time I didn't bother to learn these very carefully and so I'd spend a lot of time puzzling over uh, a picture or something like that to figure out what on earth uh, was supposed to happen. Okay, so the first thing that we'll look at is uh, a condition where we have a body resting on a frictionless surface. And the question is, what kinds of forces and or moments or couples can the uh, surface uh, impose on the body? And the only type of force it can uh, apply is a normal force. This would be the force that keeps the body from sinking through the surface into the center of the earth. Um, so typically, uh, well, this force will be normal to the plane, so in the case I have here, I have the plane drawn in the x and z axes, uh, so that um, the normal force would be in the y-axis. The only unknown that I have here, then, is the magnitude of the normal force. I know its direction. Okay, so a slightly more restrictive situation is um, the case where I have... Uh, my body up on rollers uh, with respect to the surface uh, or perhaps a more realistic example of this would be um, a wheel on a rail so if you think for example of a train car uh, it's uh, the train car can move freely in one direction so it can go this direction and this direction fairly easily but the train car can't move uh, freely in the direction perpendicular and uh, it can't move uh, into the into or out of the surface okay uh, and the idea here is that um, the environment will apply a component of a force again normal to the surface and then it will apply a force perpendicular to the uh, direction in which the uh, uh, body can move and uh, the normal force again keeps the body from sinking through uh, its environment. Uh, the perpendicular force keeps the body uh, from moving perpendicular to its freedom of motion. And uh, we've represented this here in terms of two components of the force. Uh, obviously you can also represent this as say a vector something that would look like this. Um, well, if I could draw something that would look like that. Uh, so, um, where these would be the components in the y and the z direction of this vector. So the unknowns here are the magnitudes of the two components. Okay, and finally, um, well, and you'll notice that in the first two cases, and this will also be true in the third case, that the environment cannot um, apply a couple or a moment to the object. Um, there's not twisting allowed here. Okay, so um, in the third case, we have a ball and socket joint, where the idea here is that the object is free to rotate, uh, pretty much any direction you want it to, but the end of the object is fixed. Uh, the end of the object is, a, let's say, a ball that fits into a socket that keeps it from translating. 
uh, or you have some other arrangement that keeps the end of the object fixed in all three dimensions, but yet it's still free to rotate uh, in any direction you want to. In this case, the environment can apply forces in all three directions. So I have F, X, F, Y, and F, Z. But again, the environment cannot apply any couples or any moments. So in this case, the unknowns would be the magnitudes of the three components of the force that can be applied. And it would look like that. Okay, so this represents basically the three possible situations that don't involve moments. Uh, you can apply a force in one direction, two directions, or all three directions. So let's look at situations that could involve moments. Okay, so this top one where I've drawn a rigid connection where you, or you have a fixed support and uh, this funny thing here that looks like a bad haircut is supposed to represent that the, that the object is welded or the body is welded to some object in the environment. And so in this case I can apply forces, my environment can apply forces in all three directions. So I can have Fx, Fy, and Fz. And my environment, because, it's, uh, be, because I have something in the environment that is rigidly attached to um, my body of interest, uh, I can actually apply moments in all three directions as well. And so um, there are many different ways to represent moments. Uh, I'll do it this way, uh, where you have an arrow and you have then a possible rotation direction. So this could be a moment or a couple in the x direction, a moment or a couple in the y direction. and a moment or a couple in the Z direction. Other ways that you'll see moments represented would be double-headed arrows or um, if you think about it, moments are just vectors and so sometimes you'll just see them represented as a vector. So in this case I have the components of the force that are unknown. And I also have the components of the moment. So I have mx, my, and mz. Okay, so this is the case that gives you the most, or the type of connection that gives you the most unknowns. You have six unknowns in this, um, in this type of connection. Okay, so in a pinned connection or a hinge that has a bearing with axial thrust, um, the idea is that the object is free to rotate like this in the sense it's free to rotate about this axis that goes through the middle of the object, but it is not free to rotate in any other direction and it also is pinned so it cannot move in any direction. Okay. So in this case, then you'll have forces in all three directions because the object can't, um, the, the, the object is attached to its environment in such a way that the environment can apply these forces in all of these directions. And then you'll also have couples or moments here we'll do this in a nice blue color, um, in every direction except the z-direction. You can see here that the axis uh, is in the z-direction, so if I were to um, you know, move, move the environment in such a way that I wanted to apply uh, some sort of torque or moment in the z-direction, I can't because I've got a hinge there. So. And so, so we have basically moments in 
the other two directions. So we'll have a moment in the x direction and a moment in the y direction. So we have mx and my. So in this case, we have five unknowns. We have the components of the force, which we have all three. And then we would have uh, components of the moments in the x and y direction, but no components in the moment uh, of the moment in the z direction because um, again the object is free to rotate in the z direction uh, or along the z axis. Okay, finally, um, one last uh, situation that we'll consider is the case where I have an object that can uh, rotate about the z-axis and the hinge or the bearing that it's on does not provide any axial thrust. So it can also translate along the z-axis. So you can think of this as a pin that's really long that allows the object both to rotate and slide or a hinge uh, that's configured in such a way that the object can slide back and forth on the z-direction. So in this case, um, because uh, well, because the object can slide in the z direction, we have forces in the x and y direction, but we have no force in the z direction. The object can slide in this direction. And um, let's see, what's a color combination here that will be as frightening as possible? Uh, because uh, our object is free to rotate around the z axis, we have a moment around the x direction and um, or around the x axis and around the y axis, but no moment around the z axis. So in this case then, the unknowns would be fx, fy, and mx and my. Okay, so there you have it. That's six different possibilities, and these are possibilities that show up perhaps most often. Um, well, actually, I also we have the possibility of a cable attached to an object. A cable gives you a force in just a single known direction, so the unknown would be the tension in the cable typically. But we have uh, now situations uh, that uh, or ways in which the environment can interact with a body and the forces and moments involved so that when we draw our free body diagrams we can accurately represent the effect of the environment on the body. So hopefully this has been helpful.